Yes, it's about time I finally got around to John Borman's 1974 film Zardoz after featuring the poster on my show 14 years ago. I've moved a lot since then, so I'm not really sure what happened to the Zardoz poster. <laughs> I'm sure it's around here somewhere. But look! A Return to Boggy Creek poster! After his 1972 success, Deliverance, Borman had his heart set on making an adaptation of, no, not The Wizard of Oz, but The Lord of the Rings. However, budget was kind of an issue with the studio, so his attempt to bring a film version of Tolkien's classic series was dropped. But the idea of creating a strange new world still intrigued him, so he and co-writer William Stair created the world of Zardoz. A deeply personal film to Borman, Zardoz is set in the post-apocalyptic matriarchal future of 2293, where the world is divided between the Brutals, who live in a LARPing nightmare session come to life, and the Eternals who control the Brutals with their god creation Zardoz, a floating stone head. Look, all you need to know is it's beyond 1984 and beyond 2001, but not beyond 2019 after the fall of New York. With that plot and that poster, nothing would stop me from watching this film. It's such a beautiful, eye-catching poster that of course they didn't use it for the DVD release, which looks like it could pass as one of the thousand versions of Highlander 2. And even that's better than the VHS. Ooh, -hoo, is it a tape of the wardrobe tests? This CBS Fox tape, however, gets it right. The film stars Sean Connery as Zed in a role that was originally written for Burt Reynolds, who had to bow out due to an illness. It's okay, Connery looks like Reynolds is there in spirit. I think Reynolds wore this seconds before posing nude for Cosmopolitan. If you're worried the movie might be confusing, don't worry, they give it an introduction. I am Arthur Frayne, and I am Zardoz. No need to introduce yourself to me. I've seen this movie many times. I love this film. The introduction was put into the film at the request of the studio, who thought it may help the audience better understand the film. Given the reaction from audiences at the time, I don't know if it helped. What's not to understand? He's Arthur Frayne, who calls himself Zardoz, a fate god whose hero is Merlin, though he doesn't know that Merlin is the one who draws on his face when he falls asleep. See? I got this. Is God in show business too? The answer is clearly yes. If you're confused, just watch Oh God, You Devil. The God of Zardoz is made to control the exterminators by ordering them to kill the Brutals and make them suffer. He's an Old Testament Zardoz. Just saying, if I saw a giant floating stone head, I would probably worship it too. Zardoz speaks to you. <laughs> Well, uh, just tell me who to kill. The film was shot in Connie Wicklow of Ireland, which proved relatively difficult due to the amount of nudity in the film and the fact that importing guns was banned. Let's just say uh, the movie has a lot of guns. <laughs> There's something about futuristic movies that always tempt you to make topical jokes. Or make me flash back to Sunday school for some reason. The gun is good. The, gun! the penis is evil. And now it's time to make the case that just one line inspired a whole trilogy of Estes Perkle movies. Oh, he keeps going. The penis shoots seeds. Poison the earth with a plague of men. Why does Zardoz always have to make Thanksgiving dinner awkward? Zed is one of the exterminators, and being a few years removed from Bond, he's still got a little 007 in him. <laughs> the best unofficial Bond movie. Even though Borman had clout after Deliverance, the script of the film was so weird that Warner Brothers passed on the film. However, 20th Century Fox was eager to make a film with Borman, and despite them not understanding the movie either, they gave him free reign with a small budget so long as it was under two hours. They make great use of their $1 million budget, as the cinematography is stunning, shot by Jeffrey Unsworth of 2001 Cabaret and Superman. 
And let it be known from here on out that this is written, produced, and directed by a man with a vision, goddammit. Travel is probably hard in the future, so Zed hitches a ride inside the mouth of Zardoz. Ew, gross. Smells like gun backwash. Zardoz is also a sci-fi collector. Look, he collects classic humans still in their original packaging. Better shoot someone. This collection will be worth a fortune. Without me, you are nothing. Zed's just frustrated because he didn't understand the prologue at all. Yeah, Frame does feel like the kind of quirky person that could float away if they wanted to. This transports Zed to the Vortex, which is the home of the Eternals, who live a life of immortal luxury. Okay, now I know why it took me so long to review this. I think I wanted to review the movie in the Zed costume, but <laughs> I gave up trying to be that fit. No matter where Connery goes, though, there will always be giant balls. Plus, it's 70s sci-fi, so there's enough drugs to fuel all the drafts of the script. Borman was able to get Connery for the film, due to Connery actually having some trouble finding work after Diamonds Are Forever. Not only did they get Sean Connery at a lower than usual price, but he even used his own car to drive to the set, and stayed in the Borman family house where he paid rent. The Zardoz head, however, flew itself to set. Is this the family house? Here, you can stay in our hippie son's room. Just don't inhale too heavily. You will get a contact high, and you won't be able to work for days. Stores like this are always confusing. I just want some incense. I can still smell the damn gun backwash. Zed is inspecting all of these surroundings like a cat who has finally figured out the laser pointer. There's still some help along the way. Who lives here? I have decided to again catch the audience up on the movie. If you find any package-wrapped humans under my bed, do not eat them. They're for me. Best hurry up, though. The Eternals are back from rehearsing their yearly production of Hair. Now we know exactly what would have happened if King Tut took over Stately Wayne Manor. Hey, I may have a lot of references, but you can't say the movie isn't educational. What is it? Flower. You know you want to smoke it. Or at least I do. <laughs> we'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. I wish I could show the random naked woman on the horse. She's there to remind me that I should get around to reviewing Bolero at some point. Though he doesn't know everything about the Vortex yet, it does not seem like the kind of place where you should be drinking the water. See? What the hell is that? I don't know about you, but I would have loved to have seen Borman's take on Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Who knew he would give such an elaborate backstory on the River Woman? Even she's surprised by what the exterminators believe in. Zardos says... If you obey him, you will go to a vortex when you die. And now, how do you feel saying that out loud? The main thing that a lot of people who haven't even seen the movie know about it is the costuming, which is memorable. Made locally around the shoot, they were designed by Borman's wife at the time, Crystal Cruz. They wanted costuming for the exterminators, which would raise eyebrows and exude raw masculinity. <laughs> it worked. I wouldn't mess with someone like this on the street. God, never mind bringing Bond movies back to theaters. I would have loved to have seen this on the big screen. The people in 1974 didn't know the awesomeness they had. You can tell Borman put his heart and soul into this movie. And his head. That was Borman that he shot. Our two main Eternals are Consuela, played by Charlotte Rampling, and May, played by Sarah Kestelman. There's only a couple of frames here that I can show. This set has more naked bodies draped over it than a crime scene on Hannibal. Okay, this I can show. They're revisiting Arthur's last recorded memory to find out what happened to him. Isn't it obvious? He's in his room listening to the Grateful Dead's Europe 72 album. Or he's now a fetus awaiting reconstruction due to being immortal. It, look, both of those choices are pretty much the same thing. The Brutals live in a world of roaming around in cheap suits stolen from an abandoned Goodwill, while the Eternals are dressed as colorful as their lives are empty. I love how surprised they are by the Outlands. Only we could breed. Just what in the hell world did Arthur create? What has Arthur been doing out there all these years? And that's another way to ask that! 
Arthur Frame created a biblical epic with a dash of Cecil B. DeMille and a teaspoon of Sam Peckinpah, but of course with a smile and some irony. That must be why they live on the set from Laugh-In. Some things in the future won't change, though. Even in 2293, Sean Connery is voted as Sexiest Man of the Year. Consuela wants Zed destroyed, but the others, oh no, for once in our eternal life, we would like the sex to be good. He's making all kinds of friends. <laughs> Literally, John Alderton plays an eternal named Friend. Could you not lick the Emperor Claudius, please? They vote to keep him alive for three weeks. They need someone to star in their own movie about the Outland. Until then, though, farm work. Who knew that all the supervillains needed to control Bond was psychic abilities? Ever hear the expression, if looks could kill? No, no, that's the Greco spy picture. Do you even James Bond? Zed does some work in the Statue God Department, where Friend catalogs various forms of artwork. Vortex consent for a longer program. Shall I seek Vortex consent? Yeah, put that in the you broke it, you bought it pile! Oh, this is why they live so long. They have a very healthy diet of delicious fruit and green bread. They're even eating on a budget. Lunch is cheaper when it's moldy. Like I said, the movie makes pretty brilliant use of its small budget and gorgeous cinematography with in-camera effects, but sometimes you can tell it's low. Okay, I guess this is the result of breaking green bread. You're not even hiding the fact that you're an edibles dealer. But eh, when you get this far into the initiation, you might as well join the cult. Otherwise, it'd be a waste of time. And while not every question will be answered, some will. Like, where does the green bread come from? From the world's sexiest bread dealer, of course. They have fun in the kitchen. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Zed is always bringing them wise advice, such as, why don't you eat the bread before it gets moldy? <laughs> See, your citizens have food poisoning and their brains are being rotted by mad cow bread. There's other types of people who live in the Vortex, too, such as the Renegades, who are doomed to live in an eternity as Gold Room ghosts at the Overlook Hotel. Punishment in the Vortex is being sent here to age. But even that may not be the biggest punishment, as society has become so bored with living forever that some people are called the apathetics. It's the result of consuming too much internet outrage. <laughs> we often go through here at night and put their hands in warm pails of water. Or there's that. Ugh, it's boring when she doesn't flip me over in the hay first. How is she supposed to turn against Goldfinger now? 70s sci-fi had the right idea. Back then, we were focused on the true mysteries of the universe, like studying the pulse of Sean Connery's penis. And that answers the question of what is Sean Connery doing right now in heaven? Wow, if Lost went on for one more season, this is exactly what it would have been like. Turns out your dreams won't be the weirdest thing about sleeping. Sleep became obsolete, and second-level meditation took its place. Isn't this whole movie second-level meditation? The others are still debating on whether he should be destroyed because he has the ability to destroy them, although we do still need someone to serve the appetizers. How can you speak such in front of Zed? It feels... I sense that. I have seen the future, and it is horny! Okay, okay, let's vote on life or death again. It's kind of a daily routine. The vote is in. Today we use marmalade on our green bread. Um, and then they burn Zed inside of a temple at the midsummer celebration? What started out as a simple vote has turned into punishment for friend. Never mind the gun is good, the penis is evil. This is the kind of religious film Estes Perko would have given us if he decided to embrace his inner hippie. But still with a tiny bit of bloodlust for friend, who doesn't want to go to the second level. I will, I will not go to second level with you. Take another bite of your green bread. You'll achieve second level whether you want to or not. The vortex is an obscenity. I hate all women. 
And that does it. He is doomed to age and to start a YouTube channel. Good Christ, he didn't even finish the potatoes I made. You people are insane! My, how did they even advertise this movie? John does. Oh right, it's John Borman, so it's advertised with one of the most memorable trailers you'll ever see. I'm sure he settled down in his next film. <laughs> Never mind that, between the trailers for Zardoz and Exorcist 2, you might not be able to tell what the movie's about, but you know damn sure you're gonna watch it! The walls of the vortex may keep them safe from outsiders, but again, it is another spot where you can tell they had a small budget to work with. The glass is really here because there's a giant spider on the other end of it, and Dr. No has proven to us that Connery uses glass to protect himself from spiders. After having his fill of the pretentious art kids, maybe it's time to hang out with the old people and just watch Matlock for a few hours. I seek friend. It's an old folks home. They're quite used to hearing someone randomly shouting out, I seek friend! Eh! However, this is where friend has been banished to living out the rest of his life as half Max Zorin, half Max Shrek. Although they have finally realized they're in the presence of greatness. No, not because he's Sean Connery, but because he is going to bring them the gift of death. Or at least change the music. It's been playing the Andrews sisters for about a hundred years. I like when the movie briefly becomes a geriatric zombie film. <laughs> exactly what Spielberg's Kick the Can Twilight Zone segment should have been. However, if the Vortex is going to be destroyed, which a betrayed friend is all for now, obviously you need to break the tabernacle. Where is it? The tabernacle. I can't remember. You should remember the tabernacle. I've referenced it a hundred times on this show. Breaking the tabernacle won't be easy, though. You need help. And that just sounds like it would have to involve a hippie chick. I want your help. You want to destroy us. Do you mind? She's got a stack of Jefferson Airplane albums and a suitcase of LSD. She's gonna be busy for the next two weeks. As he learns the real truth of the Vortex, and she learns what brought him there in the first place, sure, maybe it could have helped having Arthur Frayne there, but I'm sure he's off narrating some other weird 70s films. The 70s was an odd time for ambitious narration. He could easily be swiped out with Mr. Kite's Sergeant Pepper narration. I am Arthur Frayne. I have supplied the soldiers with magical instruments to end this world war. Will you still love God when he's 64? Don't worry, it works out. Now Mr. Kite is narrating this film. And then our boys won the war by shooting everything that moves and doing a whole lot of raping. Before journeying to the Vortex, Zed has taught himself how to read and learn the truth of the floating stone head. It's actually plaster. Also, Arthur may have come up with the idea simply just by glancing at a book title. The Wizard of Oz. Zardoz. Look, it could be worse. He could have looked over and said, And that's when I created the god Hibbler. But even in 2293, we still have weird Amazon reviews that are broad as shit. The Wizard of Oz was a fairy story about an old man who frightened people with a loud voice. Yes, but wait until you see the flying monkeys. Hell, as if that weren't enough, he also seems pissed that Zardoz wanted him to stop killing and to simply enslave people. Zardoz betrayed us. We were hunters, not farmers. Great. New Testament Zardoz isn't nearly as bloodthirsty. Where's the fun in that? This has proven so disappointing to Zed and his gang of Danny Treos that they came up with a plan for revenge to sneak into the Vortex and to give this damn library some proper organizational skills. Regardless, it's 1974, so clearly they should have sex. And we're not just going to have a three-way, but a psychic three-way. Wait, hang on. This isn't the 70s. It's 2293. Stupid 90s! Oh, and he's blind now. Come. Do they use any excuse to get high? I've seen men rape an old crippled woman in a wet ditch. Huh, that's disturbing. Let's get high. See, your eyesight is back now. Eat this, you'll get high! The 
more you learn about the Vortex's past, the more understandable that there would need to be exterminators. The Brutals get very distracting when you're just trying to water your flowers. I'm surprised they were never able to penetrate this Ziploc security system. Oh, it can't be done! No! No, he ruined the Vortex's freshness! Now the Eternals are more brutal than the actual Brutals. Maybe that's why they want Zed destroyed. Giving them the truth of the Wizard of Oz will lead straight into the unfortunate film Under the Rainbow. There's such a headache that it's a step up to hang out with the Apathetics. Yes, their power is not giving a shit, but they're still thirsty for that man meat. See? Bond sweat. The only cure for apathy. <laughs> Sean Connery himself is an aphrodisiac. We all know this. Don't mind the homes being set on fire. We've got an orgy to tend to. Only one thing can make this last longer. <laughs> you need to get more high. It's nice to check in again on what Connery is doing in heaven. Wait, no, this isn't heaven. They're all old and smell like Werther's Originals. Sweet death has made them all finally have a great time. Well, almost everyone. Kiss the pie! Hey, you said you wish you could have been in the wedding scene from Honor Majesty's Secret Service. You should have been more specific. Needless to say, Connery didn't have a great time shooting this scene. I will take the bride. Like hell you will. This is why he was a guest at Robin and Marion's wedding and not the bride. This was done to sneak Zed past the other Eternals. That way they can gain even more knowledge to destroy the Vortex. You will take our knowledge by osmosis. Out of time. Yep, it's kicking in. While the visuals are certainly very hypnotic throughout the film, this is also aided by the musical score. Borman chose David Monroe, who had previously written music for Ken Russell's The Devils, to create a very medieval-sounding score for the film to contrast the futuristic atmosphere. It's no surprise that not only would Borman later direct the great Excalibur, but as you can probably tell, some of Excalibur was also shot on this location. Everything about this movie is art, goddammit. No, really, look, we're painting over the extras. There may be a lot of exposition in this film, but it at least presents it to us in a fascinating way. Like how the old people are actually the scientists who created this world, but were banished for already being old and lame. We seal ourselves into this Seal ourselves here with learning. Into this place of learning. Also, they're the moody blues. When we come back, more questions! And now it's time for Lloyd's Out of Context 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week. Captain Strand? Oh, well, uh, of course there's ghosts now. If you live an eternal life, you'll never stop finding new ways to get fucking blitzed, I guess. Each to each, and all to the tabernacle. And now she has brain cancer. Okay, there's only so much I can explain myself. Luckily, Arthur Frayne is back. We've met before, I believe. I love that you had generations of this horrific world with exterminators committing genocide against the Brutals from their god Zardoz, and all of it was just a lark from this weirdo theater guy. Zardoz is a sadistic god created out of the arts, like this post-apocalyptic future is his own painting. Frayne is a showman so bored with living forever that, eh, let's see how this costume plays out in the Outland. Even Frayne's reaction to Frayne creating this murderous horror show is, <laughs> well, he is an artist. Friend is a protector of the arts, which includes Frayne's tomfoolery. While the others want to destroy all of the arts, including his creation, Zed. They're destroying statues, burning down more shit, and even through all of that... You cannot. Nothing can destroy Sean Connery's raw sex appeal. Ho <laughs> ho, they're gonna bang! Face to face with the tabernacle, this really is beyond 2001, in that the tabernacle might as well be this universe's HAL 9000. You have me in the palm of your hand. <laughs> and he's a smart ass. In this kind of movie, you just have to assume he's going to end up inside of that crystal. You have penetrated me.
Oh, who in the vortex hasn't Zed penetrated? This movie is Connery doing more batshit versions of the Bond movies that he wasn't in, complete with visuals that could pass for the opening credit sequence of a Bond knockoff film. We had the wedding scene earlier, and now we have the key to the future, which seems like it was designed by Scaramanga in The Man with the Golden Gun. This is why you don't drop acid and go in the carnival funhouse. <laughs> I'm not even on drugs and I'm terrified by this. It was this vision that caused the whole world to say, maybe we should cancel Woodstock 74. We'll try again in the 90s. Stupid 90s! Okay, he's gonna be navigating the Hall of Mirrors for hours. Let's just have one more non-Connery Bond reference for the road. We have all the time in the world. It's okay, it's just his past self who is dead. Now that he's gained all of the knowledge of life and the vortex, let the old man explain it. <laughs> well, so much for that idea. Maybe Arthur's around here. Never mind, Arthur's drunk. What I love about this film is that through its crazy visuals and 70s cult speak, the movie maintains a quirky attitude and a genuine sense of humor. I don't mean, haha, unintentionally funny. No, I mean, it's clear that Borman is a man with a vision and humor. Like how once they've all been given the gift of death, they're joyful about it like it's a day of throwing a frisbee at a park. Let's kill each other, friend. Yes, yes. regard for irony. Yes, yes. One last trick. You learn to pay more attention when you edit a review like this, mainly because you never know if someone's tits are going to randomly pop up in the background. Some things are familiar, though. We Bond fans have been worshipping Connery for years. Yes. Ah! Be careful, though. He may shoot you. If only we knew of Frayn's love for exploitation movies, too. The Exterminators were obviously created due to their love of Robert Ginty movies. All of this bloodshed, societies destroyed, and people being happy about it. Seems like it's all a punchline to Frayn's elaborate joke and Borman's. Look, they're gonna be shooting each other for years. Let's just bang in this cave for the rest of our lives. The film ends with such a memorable use of Beethoven's Symphony No. 7 that because I saw this movie when I was a kid, afterwards, when I'd hear it in a commercial, I'd say, why are they playing the theme to Zardoz? So life and death has been restored, which starts a new caveman era. In a sequence that Connery also hated filming because, due to accidents with the film, it had to be shot three times with hours of makeup before and during. And not for this guy, though. Ha! <laughs> I'm getting paid an extra day's work and I don't have to put on shit! Here the film ends with Zed and Consuela living out their days thinking, Should have stayed in the vortex. Should have stayed in the vortex. But at least we decorated. <laughs> I think we all know where the story leads after this. That's right, Stemlo! Even though it had a relatively low budget at the time, Zardoz was still not a success at the box office, with audiences and critics hating the film at the time, to the point to where audiences who were leaving the movie would warn others in line not to see it. What's wrong, 1974? Is it not 70s enough for you? But after the movie came and went in theaters, it would become a staple on late-night TV airings where people would discover the film, leading to a critical reappraisal over time. Not that it's beloved by critics or audiences now, it's still a love-it-or-hate-it film, but it still gained a lot more respect than it had upon release, even by people who don't even like it. It's one of those films where even if you read a positive or negative review, either one will credit the film's incredible incredibly high ambition and compelling storyline. Again, a lot of that feedback would also be carried over to Borman's next film, Exorcist 2: The Heretic. This is the kind of ambitious sci-fi I like to see where the director thinks, I don't care what others think. 
It's a highly satirical look at religion and politics if created by that annoying art kid. It's gorgeous, it's funny, it's kind of creepy, and it'll stay with you for the rest of your life. And now you know why I hung up the Return to Boggy Creek poster. Literally no reason whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know how to end a Zardoz review!